Hey guys, welcome to a very special segment of Chasing News. We are here on campus at the College of New Jersey in Ewing, New Jersey. We've got a great student studio audience. Guys, give yourselves a round of applause. And before we get to a very serious subject, I understand there's a gift. Yep. How are you? Welcome to uh, TCNJ. What's your name? Jake. Jake. All right, Jake. Yeah, got you a uh, t-shirt here. How much did this cost in the campus bookstore? 30 bucks. Any discount? No. <laughs> I'll take it. Very nice. <laughs> We, uh, we do have a serious subject to cover. Rohan, you've been chasing the story about the heroin epidemic, the opioid epidemic in New Jersey uh, for a while now. And uh, you've got an update on some of the stories you've already brought us. What do you got? Yeah, absolutely, guys. You know, I've been covering the addiction crisis in New Jersey, specifically dealing with heroin a little bit more than anything else. But we wanted to address for the college live audience that we have here, TCNJ, a little bit about what goes on on college campuses. Young people from 18 to 24 years old are already a little bit more susceptible to addiction but if you're in college uh, you are actually twice as susceptible to abuse drugs and alcohol half of students have reported binge drinking uh, at one point during their uh, college career I want to follow up on a couple stories that I've done TJ Walsh he was a college graduate very high GPA okay in psychology he understands very clearly the problems that he has but he can't beat them. That's the scary part, I think, of addiction. I was just telling these guys yeah. uh, before we started to tape the segment uh, that I spoke to a group of doctors in Atlantic City last week and I talked about the difference between decision making and disease. You don't get angry at somebody who's got cancer, but his sister was mad at him because in his sobriety over that course of six or eight days that he was in rehab, he made a conscious decision yeah. Yeah to get out of rehab and go back to the streets. He went through the hardest part. He went through detox and then went to the rehab facility and spent about six days there. He was very clean. He had a free scholarship to one of the best treatment facilities mm -hmm. in the area. And uh, he knew that. And you know, he wanted to own his sobriety. And that's what he tells me. And I see him on the streets still. He's back he right under so the He owned it so much, bench. he's back out he's, getting high. The drug is so powerful that after a mm -hmm. while, it, it controls your movement, your decisions. I've shared a story about having brain surgery. And a lot of times mm -hmm. people have surgeries and they get um, on these very high dose of opioids. Yeah. I remember when the doctor had to pull me off, it really was almost as if someone that? pulled the plug. Sure. There has been a lot of controversy lately with uh, some people disagreeing, saying we shouldn't call it a disease because they mm -hmm. say comparing it to cancer, you know, hard work doesn't beat cancer. And it takes away the personal responsibility factor of you made these decisions and getting over that and learning what went wrong. Uh, so I think that's an interesting debate because we've seen with Governor Christie, you know, he now always calls it a disease. We spend a lot of time, and especially the generation ahead of you, your parents' generation, very easy to look at your generation of college students and say, ah, oh, you guys are all victims. You're just a victim of circumstance. Do you think it's that? I think it all depends on the individual. Yeah. Um, to be honest, I could be a victim of circumstance. My entire family from about three generations above me has all dealt with some form of drug addiction. So I feel like it's more so the person and their personal choices and how they feel about themselves more so than the situation. I mean, it really does have to do with circumstances because there are some people, like I live in a suburban neighborhood. Um, one of yeah. my friend's older brothers overdosed on heroin my freshman year. And it's hard because like in certain neighborhoods, you see like more of a presence of drug addiction and a lot of areas. Um, that are like more poverty written, you don't see as much public outcry. Are for your it. parents worried about you being on campus? Well, yeah, just because I'm the first child and they don't know. Right, so they do worry. Yeah, they do worry. Yeah. <laughs> I showed you Larry Dunn in the first story that I did. Yep. He was as clean as I could ever believe when we did that story. He looked amazing. Well, since then, he's relapsed a few times. And now, you know, I learned it was his birthday yesterday and he's in jail. And, uh, you know, that goes to show you how powerful addiction is. Uh, you know, it, it was really a hard thing for me to hear. All right, thank you, Rohan. And thank you for joining us for this very special segment of Chasing News. I want to thank our host, Steve Stone, and his great class here at the College of New Jersey. Now, if you've got a T-shirt for me, we're happy to come and film a segment of Chasing News on your campus. Tweet us, at Chasing News. Let us know.